We're Craig and Kirsty, a British couple who got married on a beach in 2018. And instead of a honeymoon, we decided to travel the world together. And so we created Tide Not Travelers. We left our home and jobs behind us and boarded a one-way flight. But the global pandemic caused us to rethink our travel plans. So we spent six months exploring Estonia. Now we're finally continuing our travels, taking a new route and exploring some of the Greek islands. Between us, we have visited 52 countries and we'd love you to join us as we continue our travels and explore the world. Good morning. We have arrived at Lake Melisani, which is supposed to be a beautiful underground lake with crystal clear water. It's about an hour's drive east of where we're staying on the island, and it's uh, near the town of Sami, which is on the east coast of Catalonia. I've never been before. I'm so excited to go here. Craig went here years ago as a kid, um, but I've heard it's meant to be stunning. Um, spoken to a lot of people since we've been here, and they're like, oh, "Have you been yet?" And I've also been told by Craig that it's stunning, but it's going to be cold inside. So <laughs> if any of you have been watching us for a little while, you'll know I'm not so good at that. And we're in a nice warm place right now. and I'm loving the sunshine. It's an underground lake. So yeah, it's going to be a bit chilly, but the weather is spectacular today. And we're here around 11 a.m. And that's supposed to be the best time to see it with the rays of sunlight coming through the cavern and down into the lake. So yeah, really excited to see it. Let's yeah. go. So it's six euros for adults to go into the caves and four euros for children. And look how stunning it looks. Thank you. Is one name? Or... Yes, us. Well, as with most places at the moment, you have to leave your details and a passport number as well. Okay. So new at this mask thing, it's like, oh, mask slipping down, sunglasses slipping down, there's too much going on on my face to deal with. Are we going on a boat? I didn't know we get to go on a boat. Have to see. Oh, I can see water. It does look. Oh, this is really fun. <laughs> oh, see it there. Careful not to slip. Yeah. I'm glad I did these. I've not slipped for Sit down together, pack. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Sit down together, please. Okay. Here we go. We're on a boat. <laughs> the entrance of water is near the wall and is the deepest part. 39 meters depth there. The water is very clear and cold, 15 degrees. Starting from Sin Argostoli, the sea water under the ground of the island mixed. Arrive right here, brackets, half salt, half fresh. The water entering here, exit back, flowing out to next lake Caravomilos and from there back to the sea. This claim is 20,000 years old. Discovered when this roof collapsed by an earthquake 5,000 years ago. You see the mallets, green mallets, huh? the feces and eels lives here. Put it by hand, sub 1963. Fruits, not damaged by the last oh, earthquake. Nothing happens here. Ah. I had no idea we were going to come through flow. here. I thought we were just going to float around in there. It doesn't look accessible. Are we in Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> well, from this side of the cave, there are stalactites on the roof and stalagmites on the ground. It's a mix of limestone and salt, always dripping, always growing. One centimeter every 100 years. The longer of them, 20,000 years old. Yeah, well, you know, you know, 
Melasani Cave constitutes a unique geological phenomenon. It was created by a mechanical and chemical process called Karstic Apoisi. The dissolution of rocks, where water enters the calcareous rocks, erodes them and creates hollows. This impressive natural wonder is situated just outside Sami, and the cave of Melasani is one of the most significant places for tourists to visit in Greece. The lake inside the cave is 20 to 30 meters in depth and has trees and forests surrounding it. When the light is right overhead at noon, the sunlight hitting the turquoise blue waters creates a magical illusion, making the water so clear it seems that the boats are gliding through air. The whole cave of Melisani suddenly feels lit with blue light. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the benefits to COVID means that everything is very quiet and our tour guide was happy to give us a little extra tour and take some pictures with us and he told us about another lake close to Sami and that it's basically similar to this and it's called Lake Vasati I think. But what a beautiful place, Lake Melisani. It's amazing. Although a tiny bit scary when we came out of the main cave and we were in the open bit there and something huge just fell in the water <laughs> kind of made me think i'm glad that happened after we came out the cave and not before we went in the cave <laughs> but yeah it's really cool <laughs> such a naturally beautiful place and everything's natural about it apart from this man-made tunnel obviously to go down to the water's edge to board the boats vasily was also telling us that last year their busiest day was 3,800 people, as opposed to this year, the busiest day has been 1,600 people. So that's massively down on the tourist numbers that they usually get. But yeah, come to Lake Melisani, it's absolutely stunning. Come and support these guys, because they're here working every day and they need your support. We're on the high street in Sami just looking for somewhere to get lunch it looks like there's a few options it's beautiful because you've got the bay and marina on this side and lots of places set up restaurants for food and lunch etc and we're going to choose somewhere oh it's a nice looking patisserie yeah I just it says ice cream as well <laughs> yeah plus we can sit there from here you can get boat tours and cruises across to the island of Ithaca as well which is just that island over there <laughs> so thanks to a gift that we got from our friend before we left i don't have to use plastic straws which is great it's got all the cutlery in there and it comes with a bamboo straw and straw cleaner so whenever we go to these places i don't have to take the plastic straws just use ours clean it afterwards and the same with cutlery we've got our cutlery with us now i get to enjoy my nice tasty smoothie great smoothies great bakery but just a shame that we got the plastic straws but there we go it's got a bamboo straw so i'm happy <laughs> for lunch i've got a cheese ham and tomato what looks like pasty it's absolutely delicious and i've also got my iced tea and kirsty i've got a cheese pie which i think is feta it's a very classic greek style cheese and a really super tasty smoothie that's got avocado apple and lime made fresh it was really nice oh and <laughs> craig did get himself a sneaky got an lmp 
Craig loves lemon meringue pie, so it's Craig, but let's face it, I'm gonna have some. <laughs> and the whole lot came to 12 euros 50. So yeah, not bad really. Yeah, pretty decent lunch, good service, and beautiful views. What more could you ask for? Mm-mm. LMP. My favourite. Check that out. I'm gonna have some more. We've arrived at our next destination of the day. If you haven't guessed already, it's Drogarati Caves. It's literally about a 10, 15 minute journey down the road from Lake Melisani. It's just outside of Sami. Um, so the caves were discovered around 300 years ago and they're dated to be around 150 million years old. So they're pretty old. <laughs> There's a free car park here, just like there was at Lake Melisani. And then you just pay the entrance fee to get in, which we're gonna go and find out what that is now and hopefully go in and see the caves. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fairly open here. So there is a cafe and a gift shop as well. Uh, there's a swimming pool over there as well, which looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna go to the entrance and uh, pay to go inside. I think it's four euros for adults and three it's euros changed. for children. You can see on the board where it was a five and yeah. they've penned over it and put a four euro. That was the same with Lake Melisani as yeah. well. They'd actually dropped the admission fee by a euro. Yes, yes. So just finding a lot of a lot of things like this in uh, Kefalonia, it's always a good idea to have cash on you because a lot of places don't have don't accept card. So we just had to pay car, uh, pay with cash here. So just a tip if you're coming here, always make sure you've got some cash on you. it down into the Drogarati Caves and it's absolutely spectacular and then you come in here and you get this view so it's awesome <laughs> I can't believe this is down here it is spectacular cool. yeah and it's really cool the way they've lit it up with all kind of goldeny lights so it really does highlight it really nicely beautiful <laughs> There should be a pile of gold with a lamp at the top of it. <laughs> and then a magic carpet's gonna fly us out of here. Yeah? just walked up all of those stairs out of Drogarati Caves. They're really spectacular. It was really beautiful down in there. But cold. Beautifully lit up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kirsty felt the cold. I didn't need my fleece though. 
<laughs> and now it's toasty up here again in the sunshine. It's lovely, <laughs> really nice sunny day. But yeah, highly recommend going to see Drogorati Caves, especially at the moment. It's a bit sad seeing it so quiet, but although we did appreciate having it to ourselves. Yeah, it was cool having it to ourselves. <laughs> right, time to head to our final location for the day and we'll explain why when we get there. Let's go. back is Argostoli and we've just quickly stopped off for a coffee break in one of our favorite coffee and cocktail bars. It's just got a great vibe in here just having a bit of a time out before we finish off today. We have come to the other side of the island to a place called Catavothres. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's just at the end of the peninsula, a bit further along from Argostoli. And the reason we've come here is because there's some big paddle wheels that indicate the direction of the flow of water. So the water flows from this side of the island over to where we've been this morning in Lake Melisani. The water takes two weeks to flow from here to the other side of the island. It just demonstrates that there's an underground network of caves that flow. So all the waters here in Catalonia are all connected by these underground uh, caves. So it's really cool. We went to see that this morning and now we're here seeing the paddle wheel and seeing the direction that it turns. Although looking at it right now, it's only turning ever so slightly. Very slowly, <laughs> but yeah. It's a huge wheel. Oh, it's moving. It's moving ever so slightly. <laughs> in fact, it's thinking about it and then going back in the other direction. <laughs> I tell you what, now it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Just needs a bit of encouragement. There we go. They've built this nice little channel area and the water flows in there from the sea along this waterway to the paddle and then the other side of the paddle the water flows underground essentially all the way over to the other side of the island and through areas such as Lake Melisani. It's really cool here, you can kind of really get an idea of how the water flows from here over all around the island and it's just so crystal clear just like when we were at Lake Melisani this morning down to the bottom and not to mention it's a beautiful location because obviously at the other side of me from here you've got the waves lapping in the ocean and the beautiful backdrop of Kefalonia. beautiful place to go. So unique and unlike any other lighthouse I've ever seen. Our final stop of the day is Argostoli Lighthouse. I'm not sure if that's its official name but it's right at the end of the peninsula as you come in from the Ionian Sea into the bay and the port of Argostoli. And tonight it's our sunset spot. <laughs> well, it's a little bit cloudy, but in between the clouds, you can see the sun setting. It's pretty windy out here, so I'm hoping you can hear us. <laughs> but wow, what a spot.
house of St. Theodoroi lies on a man-made peninsula close to Argostoli village, the capital of the island. It is a circular structure with 20 columns and its tower is 8 metres tall. The building has a simple and Doric architectural style and was originally built in 1828 by the British administrator Charles Napier, who ruled the island at that time. The earthquake of 1953 destroyed the original lighthouse and it was rebuilt in 1960 by local architect Takis Pavlatos, according to its original architectural design. The lighthouse still works today and gives a romantic view at night across the peninsula of Paliki and the island of Vardianoi. Join us next time as we head out in search of Kefalonia's beaches and find out just how hard hit this little island was by Hurricane Janos and the global pandemic. If you can't wait that long, head over to our Instagram at Tidenot Travelers for daily updates on what we're currently up to and what's coming up in our future videos. That. Did you see that? That was a bit unnerving. <laughs> something just fell straight in the water, like a rock or something. So that's a lot less than they usually have in terms. <sighs> it's hard talking, walking uphill and breathing in this mask. <sighs> so that's massively. So let's head over there. Jogakati. <laughs> How do you say it? To Jogarati. How do I say it? Because look at this cute little set that this wasp is really interested in. <laughs> Go away. Go away. Yeah. So look at this cute little set. Tasty smoothie from I don't know how you say that. No idea how you pronounce that. Do you? <laughs> how would you pronounce this? <laughs> Great smoothie. Do you want the last bit? So much cream. No, you have it. It's okay. Sure. I love you this much. Yeah, you can have it. have the last bit of LMP. No, it's okay. You have it. <laughs> I will. <laughs>